Hi guys, so today I'm going to take you through how to change uh, brake discs and brake pads on a Porsche Cayenne 958, that's second generation. This is a facelift car, um, 2015 base model, but the principles on the brakes are all the same. So we're going to be replacing the discs, the pads, the sensor, some of the tools and, and supplies I'm going to use is a hammer, hopefully not too much, some copper grease, pad spreader, some brake cleaner, I got my plumber's pliers there, an M14 and an M5 spline socket, uh, Torx 45, a 19 millimeter um, socket for the wheels, some screwdrivers to help it eclipse and spreading the pads, and then a torque wrench to make sure that we torque everything um, correctly. So let's get on with taking the wheel off and I'll show you where the jacking points and stuff are now. Okay, so we're gonna put the jack underneath the jacking point. Um, I'm just using a hockey puck to protect the mount there. You can get special mounts that just fit in there. But the hockey puck is fine. Obviously the handbrake is off. Um, so it's not on this one, but over there the wheel is choked so that the car can't roll. So let's just get that off the ground. Just enough until the wheel is released. Okay, so that's good. So let's get that off now. try to do the last bolt that makes the top one. It's just easier to hold the wheel in place. So you don't you're always fully in control that way. There you go. Keep that out of the way. Alright, let's have a closer look. Okay, it just started raining. <laughs> So what we're going to do is we need to take the caliper off, which is this and this bolt here. Um, before that, we want to unhook the sensor there and unmount it from the um, holder. Um, and then we'll take the disc off, then we'll replace the pads and we'll put everything back together. So let's start with the sensor first. Okay, so this will be a little bit tricky to show with one hand, but we'll see what we can do. So I'm gonna put a little screwdriver in there, pull that tab back, and then while I do that, I'm gonna slide it straight out. So it'll, from here to here, that's the plug that's gonna slide straight out. So I'm going to put it back on the tripod and um, you can sort of see me fiddling around with it. So it obviously doesn't want to go because it's got lots of crud on. Good thing about this is if you break it, it doesn't really matter because you're changing the sensor anyway. But obviously, for good practice, you don't want to break anything. So let's push it from here. off as such. Okay, now what we want to do is we actually want to release this one. Um, the way you do that is you just twist it like there. 
and then that just slides right out. So it hooks in there, right? So it's in there, twist it back. So you twist it, it comes out, that's it. So the next thing we'll do is we'll want to um, spread the brake pads a little bit. So you can use the counterweights on the rear brakes to do that. So you see I'm just pushing them out. I'm not trying to get them all the way off here. Yeah, that's not the point. The point is just to get them loose, okay? So that we can take this off. All right, now we're gonna take off this bolt and this bolt with a number 14 spline socket, which goes has to go in nice and straight. So let's put you back a little bit so that we can work. All right. With a bit of luck, this will knock it loose. Which is nice and easy. These are all threaded bolts. Okay, so we'll just support that. There we go. It comes off nice and we're just gonna put that back there. Okay, so some people like replacing these bolts. Um, I would, if, you know, it'd been used a couple of times, well, it'd been done and undone a couple of times. This is the very first time this is happening. So I'm gonna keep them because I'm quite happy with that. Um, and obviously we'll make sure we torque them correctly. So handbrake is inside the rotor. Um, so you wanna make sure it's loose. I've not put my diagnostic on this to wind it back. I'm gonna to try to do it without, um, just in case, you know, some of you guys watching don't have that tool to hand, uh, just to show you what that looks like. Um, if that's not gonna work, then we'll have to hook it up and um, rewind it uh, for the service, okay? So let's loosen this up. Uh, this is the only one that you need to take the disc off. This is actually a plug that won't be on the new disc, so we're gonna take that off as well. This is uh, a five spline. This is a 45 Torx. So let's get that done now. So I'm just loosening them with this. I wouldn't tighten this is just all for speed now let's see how easy this is going to come off all right so that's nice and easy um, so it's not too hard um, this car doesn't have too many miles the more miles you have and the more this is being used the deeper the ridge on the inside here will be and that's really what defines how hard or how easy this is if this ridge is deep then you have to pull the brake shoe past it and that's well you have to pull the brake this past the brake shoe and that's where it gets really tricky. Um, the little screw that you unscrewed here um, allows you to access the adjuster. So if you are stuck without any tools, um, what you do is you have the disc on there. Um, you basically turn it around until you're in front of the adjuster and then you put a screwdriver in there. Um, obviously this one's too big, but then you can sort of adjust that down to make that job easier for you. Cool. So while this is all off, obviously we want to make sure that we clean that nicely. So I'll get some brake cleaner and we'll give that a nice dusting. Okay. 
Okay, here's a new disc. Every one of these is going to have some sort of coating on, which we'll want to clean off. Um, so, just again, brake cleaner. Spray on. Get the hub nice and clean so it looks like new. There's no real need to score the disc or anything like that. Um, that actually doesn't do much except feel like you've done more work. Alright, to the other side. It's a bit dirty. Which is surprising. Alright, so I'm gonna do the inside obviously. Just for the handbrake. Okay, so let's get the disc put on. If um, you really struggled getting it off, um, you will have probably adjusted this if you don't have the electronic tool, but you'll probably want to reset this. So you just with a screwdriver um, like this, you just lever and twist it around. You want to minimize that so that it's going to be easier to put your um, new discs on because what will have happened over time is it will have expanded um, and seated itself. Well, the old disc, which will have had some material taken out and probably a ridge built up. Um, this one doesn't have that many miles yet, um, so it's not an issue. I don't have to mess around with that. So let's pick this up um, and line it up nicely. There we go. Some people like replacing this. Um, I think it's more cosmetic than anything else because effectively the only thing this thing does is it keeps the disc from spinning independently from the hub when the wheel is on. Once the wheel is on, you've got five bolts and the wheel pushing against that, holding it on. So uh, as such also, this doesn't have to be particularly tight. Let's get this plug in there. Um, once this is on, you would adjust that um, come back up um, so that it's seated nicely so that your um, electronic parking brake doesn't have to um, overextend itself because it won't be as efficient. This doesn't have to be super tight. You just have to make sure that it's you know, flush, it's just seated underneath. Otherwise your wheel will not sit flush against there and you'll have a significant vibration issue. Okay, that's that done. Let's move on to the brake pads. Okay, onto the brake pads. So first thing we gotta do is we've gotta spread them to compress the, um, the little caliper pieces. Uh, I use this Paget tool, um, really convenient. You just put it in there um, and it nicely and evenly, as you tightens, compresses everything. So you wanna take your time on this. If anything isn't moving, it tends to be indicative actually of a fault like one of those might have gotten stuck um, or seized, um, which you sometimes find. I would be very surprised on this one because again, not many miles, so it all goes nice and smoothly. Um, you don't want to force it, you just do it until you feel that it's all the way back. And the reason we want to put these all the way back is we're putting new pads on new discs, which is, um, good but you also want to make sure it fits on nicely without you having to wrench them on there so let's have a feel yeah that's all the way back so we'll loosen that off there we go and just take that out oops okay so as you can see now are pushed all the way back so now what's left for us to do is just get the pads out um, I'll just use a screw make sure you don't put the screwdriver on these things because you will damage the rubber um, and then this relatively easy job becomes a much harder job so just drop them there to the other side nice and easy okay Nice. There. Okay. So 
This is the inside one which has a sensor on. Now the sensor doesn't actually fit past the spring, which is an important thing to remember for when you're assembling later, because otherwise you will have to disassemble everything. So we want to take the spring out. Um, a lot of people replace them. Um, I replace them when they're you know, very visibly worn. Um, this hasn't been used that much, so not an issue for me. Put a screwdriver under there. And just pop that out like that. Okay, again, watch out. None of these nick the rubber seals. It's very easy to do, but you don't want to do that. There we go. The sensor comes out together with the pad. Let's put that there. And let's start cleaning things up. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up. Um, the important things to clean are the contact points. There, 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 there. Um, I'm just going to put a wire brush over those. Um, put some copper grease on, which I'll show you in a bit, and refit it there after we clean this all up as well. So I'll be right back. Okay, so it's all cleaned up. Um, as I said before, lots of people replace this. Sometimes it's in with a brake kit um, type things. I personally am not gonna replace this one. That doesn't mean you shouldn't um, if you feel like it. They're not expensive parts. Um, I just don't see the need to replace it just for replacement's sake. So let's clean this stuff up. Just use a soft brush. I mean, you can spend a lot of time on this, making it so clean that you can eat your dinner off of it. Um, there are breaks that will get dirty, so I don't really see the point in that. Um, I'm just going to put some air in there. So you see the dust has been massively reduced already. Um, plenty still there. Wear masks if you want to be super safe about it. Um, I'm not so fussed about it. Um, I don't smoke, so I have some spare capacity in my lungs. Um, right, so let's get the clip on there. Um, as I said before, this, this plug will not fit through the gap once the, um, the spring clip is in there. Um, but obviously the other side will. It's, it's fine. It's only if you're having to replace pads that you have to worry about that because then this is often sort of, you know, set in. Um, you can't really take them off without breaking them off. So um, you would have to put this in, then put the spring on top and then mount it that way. We don't have to worry about it. So to prep for mounting this, we're gonna put a little bit of copper grease on the contact points. Uh, get a bit of copper grease there. Okay, so we're gonna lightly put some on there so all of this is just to minimize any opportunity for squeaking um, any you know sort of part that has any movement on it uh, which are the contact points in this case can cause squeaking um, not always um, I'm trying to be as careful as possible with making sure that whatever contact point will have some copper grease on it. Um, I'm just clearing some of the edges off. All right, so let's get our plumber's pliers, open them up fairly high, and let's mount this bad boy in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the pliers on there and well, let me show you actually what I'm going to do because I'm not sure how much you'll see. I'm going to put that there like such and I'm going to I'm going to gently squeeze this in because that's pressure fitted in there um, and so doing it this way means that it'll go in nice and easy it says. Okay. 
go. Make sure that's seated correctly. Because that's not that's not seated 100% there. So you see, it's got two gaps there. You have to make sure that that's seated in the middle. This isn't. It's seated slightly to the side. Um, you don't want that to happen because that can just ping out all of a sudden. There. So now it's nicely in there, nice and tight. So this will push on there. Okay. So the next thing we're gonna get um, the sensor, which the wind conveniently blew. Blue, sorry. Close to me. So the sensor goes on the inside there. Okay. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of copper grease on the guiding pins. If there's anything with these guiding pins, like you know, significant corrosion, um, these are fairly easy to replace um, and fairly inexpensive to replace. So, you know, one of the nice things about putting copper grease on is you clean it a little bit more, but you also feel of any imperfections uh, while you're doing it. So, um, if you feel like you know massive wear or something like that, just get that replaced. Again, this is one of the contact points to make sure that we prevent any potential squeaking to happen. Next then are the pads. We're going to put some copper grease on the back of the pads. Like this. Interestingly, even though these Paget pads are, uh, well, Paget, they are in fact Techstar branded. Um, Paget and Techstar are part of the same company making brake pads. Um, both are OEM providers for Porsche and many others and make very good products. Um, some of the Techstar low dust ones are excellent as well. Um, these aren't those. I've used them extensively on BMWs. Um, it makes a night and day difference on your rims. Okay, we're just putting a very thin layer on. Putting a little bit in there, putting it there. Obviously you want to make sure nothing goes onto the friction material itself. Let's mount the sensor. And put that... So that just slides there. There we go. That's it fitted. And this goes in there. You apply a little bit of pressure to get the guiding pins to match up with the holes. Make sure that you're as straight as possible. And that'll almost put itself on. That's one there. Let's put the other one. Counterbalance weights there, and just there we go. So that's them there. The spray, a good measure, a bit of braking on, and that allows us to mount it back onto the carrier. So let's change the camera so you can see what's happening there. I hope you get a good view on that. Let's put it like there. Okay. So make sure our hands are clean. I'm gonna just burst a little bit of air in those guy in those holes. Um, what I want to make sure is there's no debris in there, um, because again, if you mess that thread up, that's your whole carrier, which is expensive and a pain. So. Okay, so because we compress everything nicely, that just slides on there. Um, like I said, I'm not replacing the bolt, I'm reusing them. If you want to re replace them, by all means do that. Get them from Porsche. So, just screw it in by hand to so make sure that the thread is nicely seated. Uh, you don't want to force that in, this should be easy, right? There should be very little resistance there. Shake this a little bit. So, there we go. Um, 
I'm just going to put a little bit, make sure there's no pressure. Yeah, that's all good. This is all good. Okay. I'm not going to fully tighten it with the impact wrench. It's just for speed of assembly, really. So, so the torque on this is too low to be sufficient. Like that. So the normal fastening torque for these bolts, as per the manual, is 85. Uh, I'm going to put it on 110. Um, on the front, it's a 140, I think. Um, but I tighten them to 180. Um, just because I want to. I think it just feels a little bit more appropriate for like an M14 and M12 bolt to do that. Um, even other cars typically have 110 for the caliper carriers. Okay. And it doesn't feel like a lot when you're doing it. Okay. That's that tightened. That's on there. So the only thing we now have to do is attach the sensor back to where it was. So we run it through there. Not sure if you guys can see that. Let me just take the camera. Okay, so now we just gotta mount the sensor back into where it's supposed to go. Uh, let's find... Ooh, make you guys seasick. Uh, let's find the plug. So as we said before, this plug needs to go in there and we know that this has to go on that side. So we're gonna mount it there, like there, twist it. That's all good, and this plug here is such a snug fit, it actually stops that off from twisting. So we just click it in there, job done. All right, so that's pads and this on the rear. The next thing we're gonna do um, is we're gonna put the wheel back on and then make sure you depress the brake a few times. Um, and if you've adjusted this correctly, then your parking brake should be absolutely fine um, you can use the actuators and reset the module if you want to um, if you have the tool it depends on how how worn everything is all right good luck with it guys if you have any questions uh, comments are most welcome thanks